Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss the difference between the master's degree and the PhD degree in terms of career, in terms of employability and many other factors. Now, if you are somebody who has finished his bachelor's degree and is contemplating of doing graduate study, then this video is very important to you. And it's also important to the parents of people who are thinking about doing master's or PhD degree because it entails a substantial amount of work and time in terms of their life. So I'm going to divide this video into five points. The first three points I'm going to mention some of the advantages of doing the MS degree compared to the PhD and the last two points I'm going to mention some of the advantages of doing the PhD degree with respect to the MS degree. So let's begin. So the number one issue which comes to the mind of most people is that of jobs and essentially if we want to classify these two degrees we can say that the MS degree is largely targeted to industry essentially to higher end industry and the PhD degree is largely targeted to academia because the PhD degree is something which is required by all universities and most colleges if you are aspiring for a faculty position. PhD degree is also required by many government labs, by many high-end private sector companies. Now if we look at the typical industry situation for master's degree people, there are essentially a very large amount of large companies, medium-sized companies and small companies where you can go to work, especially if you happen to be in a country which has a reasonably well-developed industrial infrastructure system. Now, in contrast, if you think about the PhD, you can go to work at universities, at colleges, at government labs. And if your country has a highly developed industrial base, then you can go and work in some of the companies also because they may be amenable to hiring a PhD candidate. Now, the difference happens because if you are thinking of the funding in universities, colleges and government labs, it is in the tune of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars hundreds of millions of dollars and sometime it can go up to a billion dollar. For example, if you think of bodies such as the National Science Foundation, their yearly budget is in the billions of dollars. However, if you are looking at typical companies, uh, for example, Google or Apple or any of these large companies, their market cap itself is in the trillions of dollars. And in fact, there are a very large number of companies which are talking about market caps in the range of billions of dollars and so on. So essentially there are a much larger number of jobs out there. There is a much larger pool of money out there, which is there in the corporate world compared to the research and academic world. And therefore the job chances are much more for a master's degree candidate than they are for a PhD degree candidate. Now let's look at the number two issue and this is for employability. Now essentially you must have heard the situation that as soon as you do a PhD degree you tend to become overqualified for many jobs and many employers question your employability. Now of course again we have to go back to the basic reason why these degrees exist. The PhD degree is essentially training you to become a professor or a lecturer so in case you are aspiring to these positions, then of course the PhD degree is required. PhD degree is going to make you more employable for this position. In fact, somebody with a master's degree cannot think about joining a research university as a professor. However, if you are looking at the corporate world, essentially you may be becoming too specialized to work in the corporate world. And this happens because many a time the PhD student is not able to express themselves in a more general manner. So for example, if a PhD student has been working on piezoelectric materials, he is likely going to be doing his research on some esoteric topics such as the shear mode actuation of piezos in the case of nonlinear electric fields and so on. And what would happen is that this person would not be able to talk to regular people about what his research is, put the research in the context of the larger problem of material science and so on. So this often happens in the case of many people. 
In contrast, a master's degree person doesn't have any of these problems. He essentially has mastered a particular area of his field. For example, somebody in mechanical engineering may have mastered heat transfer. Somebody in computer science may have mastered machine learning. Somebody in aerospace may have mastered fluid mechanics. And therefore, what happens is that they actually are still quite employable by most of the companies. In fact, if the country is reasonably developed, then there are many jobs out there where they would actually prefer master's degree candidate to bachelor's degree candidates. Now, the third aspect is that of behavior. And essentially, we can think about the master's degree student as an enhanced bachelor degree student, the enhancement being something like 1.5 times or 1.2 times the bachelor degree student. And this enhancement happens because the master's degree student does a lot of concentrated coursework in the discipline where he or she is trying to become a specialist. Now, if you go back and think about your bachelor's degree student, very often the first and second year are very basic subjects. You may be studying aspects of math, science, psychology, sociology, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you spend a lot of time in learning English and learning writing and so on. And all these are important skills, but they may not be directly related to your major. However, when you're doing an MS degree, you are studying things which are directly related to your major. So these all become very useful. And also the behavior you have is very much like a normal person. You are a team player. You know how to work with different people on projects. You know how to get along with people and so on. Now, what happens with PhDs is very often the PhD through a process of self-selection, only the more introverted and independent minded students tend to become PhDs. These tend to be lone ranger people. And essentially after doing many years of independent research, this characteristic of being independent, being a lone ranger, being a relatively shy person gets exacerbated. So what happens is that Many companies feel that PhD students may not fit very well into their structures and if they are smaller companies then they are actually more afraid of this. Some very large companies may be okay with having a PhD here and there because they probably have PhDs who they have hired before who can easily mentor these people but many people feel uncomfortable mentoring PhDs. So sometimes the manager himself may have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree and may feel uncomfortable hiring a PhD student. So these aspects about behavior, whether real or perceived, have a negative impact on PhDs in the corporate job market. Now, the fourth issue, and this is the positive issue, is that of immigration. So in most cases, you will see that the governments love PhDs. And this is because PhDs have put in a lot of time and effort at mastering a certain discipline and less and less people are willing to do this so the governments love phds and if you are aspiring for visa in any country if you are aspiring for permanent resident status you will find that if you have a phd this is much easier so for example in the us if you are aspiring for the eb1 green card process you will find that if you are a phd this is much simpler compared to a master's degree similarly in canada if you are applying for the permanent resident process, the PhD carries with it a large amount of points. So this is very important and especially the fact that PhDs often write papers, get prizes. These things are all signs of exceptional achievements and so on in the eyes of the immigration officer. And these people are much more likely to get their green card or permanent residence as the case may be, or even the visa for that matter. Now, in case a master's degree student publishes a paper or two, he or she can mitigate this problem to some extent. In case they do not, they just come across as slightly enhanced bachelor's degree student in the eyes of the government and immigration. And there are a lot of such people, so there is nothing so special about being a master's degree student. Now, the fifth issue is that of status. And we will see that the master's degree person is essentially very much like a normal human being, uh, very much like a bachelor's degree person and so on. And essentially they are easily replaceable. They are not unique. So if somebody has done a master's degree in mechanic mechanical engineering, there are many such people. So 
it's nothing special. However, if somebody has done a PhD, they have a potential of becoming unique by writing papers. They essentially beat their own path. The path of two PhD students is never the same. Two theses are never the same. And essentially the CV of two PhD people is never the same. The papers they have published are different. And so every PhD student essentially becomes a unique person. Now, essentially with this comes across a certain philosophical aspect that if you are somebody who publishes papers over a long period of time, then to some extent you can become famous. And this is extremely difficult for a master's degree student to be. Essentially, they get all their importance from the organization they work for. So if they are working in Google or they are working in ISRO or they are working in any big company, then all the respect the master's degree student is getting is coming from the organization where they are. Maybe they are senior engineer there, they are vice president of the company, they may be CEO or so on. And in case this position goes, this person essentially is reduced to nothing. He is again a normal human being. In contrast, if we look at a PhD, this person essentially carries his or her CV with himself. The institutions may change, but this person is who he is. His research knowledge stays in his head. And so as far as lifetime and post lifetime accomplishment is concerned, the PhD is far superior. So you will see that even today, when I look at some of my professors who have passed off who are no longer here but i can see their papers in the system they are still getting cited they are still making an impact and so on and whenever you hear of any kind of scientist for example gauss for example newton for example jc bose or any such person you will see that these people have survived far beyond their actual lifetime because they published papers and invented something new so essentially the phd gives you the scope for immortality which is not there through the master's degree so if you are somebody who wants to contribute beyond your lifetime then the phd is the way to go so that was my video discussing the difference between the ms and the phd degree again i made a series of points here it's up to the people to decide which path they want to take and this of course will depend on their personal predilections on their temperament on their philosophy and their ideology all these things come together in making these kind of important decisions and i hope this video will help you to make these kind of decisions i will end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then